Welcome back to the Gretel instructional video series. In this video, we will be using Gretel to perform four specification tests using the same data and OLS estimation performed in the previous video. The only file you will need to follow along with this video is the Gretel file Real Estate. The four specification tests covered in this video are as follows. The JB test of normality, the Ramsey reset test, the Chow test for structural change, and White's test for heteroscedasticity. Each of these tests are very easy to perform in Gretel, but please make sure that you understand both the null and the alternative hypothesis of each test, as well as what you should do if your model fails one or more of the specification tests. Now let's open Gretel and get started by estimating the OLS regression. Price is a function of a constant, square footage, age, U-town, pool, and fireplace. The first step is to open the data series Real Estate. To do this, click on File, Open Data, and then User File. Now you must locate the directory in which you saved the file. Remember that this is the same file that you used in both videos 2 and 3. Once located, double click to open the file. We will now estimate the regression exactly the same way as in the previous video. First, select Model, followed by Ordinary Least Squares from the main menu. Next, select the variable Price as a dependent variable and square footage, age, U-town, pool, and fireplace as independent variables. The last step is to click OK and the OLS output will open in a new window. We have already discussed the interpretation of the coefficients as well as other items on the OLS output in the previous video. Now we will perform each of the four specification tests using this OLS output, so make sure not to close the window until the end of this video. The first specification test we will perform on this data is a JB test of normality because we want to know if the residuals are normally distributed. The null hypothesis is that the residuals are normally distributed against the alternative that the residuals are not normally distributed. Let's open the OLS output window to perform this test. The first thing that we need to do is to save the residuals. To do this, select Save on the menu from the OLS output followed by Residuals. A window will pop up asking you to name the variable and to give a description. Leave the variable name as uhat1 and the description as residual from model1. Now we will go back to the main Gretel screen. We are ready to perform the JB test of normality now. On the main Gretel screen, click on the variable uhat1. Once it is highlighted in blue, go to the menu and select variable followed by normality test. A new window will open with the results of the normality test. The first thing that you will notice on this output is that there are several different tests for normality. We are interested in the last test, the JB test of normality. In this case, the test statistic is 0.1346, which has a p-value of 0.9349. This means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the residuals are normally distributed. It is also a good idea to check the p-value for the other tests. In this case, all of the tests fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, let's move on to the second specification test, the Ramsey reset test for omitted nonlinearities. The null hypothesis for the Ramsey reset test is that there are no omitted nonlinearities, against the alternative that there are omitted nonlinearities. Now, let's move back to the OLS output to perform this test. To perform the Ramsey reset test, Select Test from the menu, followed by Ramsey's Reset. A pop-up will open, giving you several variations of the Ramsey Reset test. We will use the first option, Squares and Cubes, because it is the most common form of the test. Once you click OK, a new window will open with the results of the Ramsey Reset test. The hypothesis is tested using an F-test whose value is 7.5047, with a p-value of 0 0.000. 582. Since the p-value is very small, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there are nonlinearities that are omitted from this regression equation. Even though this specification test presents a problem with our model, let's continue with the next specification test, the Chow test for structural change. More specifically, we are going to test whether the coefficient estimates are stable across the age of a house by breaking the sample into houses that are between 0 and 10 years old and 11 years old or older. The null hypothesis for the Chow test is that there is no structural change. 
Before running the test in Gretel, we must determine the observation at which the house age increases from 10 to 11 years old. Since the data is already sorted by age, all we have to do is look at the data series. Let's do that now. Go back to the main Gretel screen. To open the variable age, double click on it. You will notice that the variable starts at zero and increases to 60 years old. We need to find the observation number with the first house that is 11 years old. This is observation 671. Now we can go back to the OLS output to perform the chow test. To perform the chow test, select test from the menu followed by chow test. A pop-up will open asking you which observation to split the sample. Input the value 671 and then click OK. A new window pops up with the results of the chow test. The test statistic for the chow test is located at the very bottom of the chow test output. We will use the F test to perform the hypothesis test. In this case, F is equal to 0.9589 and has a p-value of 0.4519. This means we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no structural change between houses that are 0 to 10 years old and 11 years old or older. Now let's move on to the last specification test that we will cover in this video. The last test that we are going to cover in this video is White's test for heteroscedasticity. The null hypothesis of White's test is homoscedasticity. In other words, the error variances are constant across observations. The alternative hypothesis is heteroscedasticity. To perform White's test, go back to the OLS output. From the menu on the OLS output, select Tests, followed by heteroscedasticity, and then White's test. We will use the first version, which includes both the squares and the cross products in the regression equation. The test statistic for White's tests are found at the bottom of the output. The test statistic is 24.4371 and has a p-value of 0.108, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. Before continuing, notice that there is a warning, data matrix close to singularity. Additionally, look at the coefficient estimates and standard errors. They are both extremely large. This indicates that the results may not be reliable and it is best to try another version of White's test, for example using only squares, or to try a different heteroscedasticity test. If heteroscedasticity ends up being a problem, you can estimate the OLS regression using the robust standard errors option. This will adjust the standard errors in the model so that the results are robust to different kinds of heteroscedasticity. Let's go back to the main Gretel screen and try that now. On the main Gretel screen, select Model, followed by Ordinary Least Squares from the menu. Next, select the variable Price as a dependent variable. The independent variables should be saved from the first time that you ran the regression. This time, check the box that says Robust Standard Errors. Now click OK. The best way to see the impact of selecting robust standard errors is to compare the OLS results side by side. On the left, you can see the output from the first estimation, and on the right, you can see the output from the second estimation with robust standard errors. You will notice that the coefficients are identical, but the standard errors and hence t-statistics and p-values change. Since heteroscedasticity is not a problem, the changes are only minor. If heteroscedasticity is a problem, the changes can be substantial. Since it does not hurt to use robust standard errors, it is a good idea to check robust standard errors each time you run an OLS regression. We have now finished learning how to use Gretel to perform four specification tests. Before wrapping up the video, let me summarize the three key points to remember. Number one, all of the specification tests are performed from the OLS output window. Number two, if the model fails a specification test, you must fix the problem before using the regression results. And number three, it is a good habit to click robust standard errors when estimating an OLS regression. This concludes the fourth video in this series.